Good evening and welcome to Prime Sports with me, Razak Musba. Now, the Minister for Youth and Sports, Mustafa Yusif, says the government is not in a position to finance trips of supporters to the World Cup in Qatar, which starts later this month. In a previous tournament, the Black Stars has participated. The ministry facilitates trips for supporters and other Ghanaians to the host country to support the senior national team. However, with the current economic state of the country, where many are reeling from the impact of the global economic crisis, Mr. Yusuf and his sector deem it unfavorable to fly supporters to the Mundial. In view of the current economic situation that we find ourselves, the government have decided that we will not be financing uh, supporters to the World Cup. And I want to repeat that. In view of the current economic situation we have found ourselves, the government will not be using consolidated fund to fund anybody to, as a supporter to Qatar. But what we will do, as historically you know, we will continue to rely on corporate Ghana to support us so that we can get some few supporters to support our national team. The ministry is also working very closely with the mission. Our, that's the Ghanaian mission in Doha. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters in Doha and they are mobilizing every week just like we are doing here to support our stars. They have been rehearsing week in, week out to support our stars and we are working very closely with the Ghanaian community in Doha to also support the little one that we will be able to galvanize support from corporate Ghana to go to Qatar and support our stars. The Ministry of Youth and Sports will continue to appeal to corporate Ghana and the private sector to support and finance Ghanaian supporters to provide symbolic support for our stars. Well, Mr. VC was speaking during Goldfield Ghana's presentation of $300,000 support for the Black Stars ahead of the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. The executive vice president and head of Goldfield's West Africa, Joshua Motiti, reiterated his outfit's commitment towards the development of sports in Ghana and is confident the financial support will propel the Black Stars to excel in Qatar. So let me just talk a little bit about the Goldfields Foundation, which is the vehicle we've been using to support sports development in this country. Foundation was established in 2004 and has so far invested over $90 million in the development of programs and shared value projects in our host communities, particularly in Takwa and Daman, in the Western region and in other places across the country. We wish the Ghana Black Stars well at the World Cup, and be, we believe they will make our nation proud. We're looking forward to their qualification past the group stage, where we will hopefully um, all rejoice in, you know, their qualification. And I will appeal more to my uh, bosses to see what else we can do to support them further. We really wish Black Stars very well and looking forward for their qualification pass to go the group stage. Well, the Ghana Football Association have signed a one-year partnership deal with Tanning Ghana Limited worth $100,000. The Sports Arena Mubarak was there and filed this report. Another good news for the FA as far as partnerships are concerned. It is a deal which sees them get $100,000. Officials of Tanik say it is a package for the Black Stars as the World Cup approaches. The one-year deal was signed by GFA boss Ket Okreku and Tanik director Steven Klogo. The partnership also includes three brand new cars given to the Football Association. Transportation needs of the Football Association that will ensure that our staff will travel safely and in real time and in time to deliver football products to the consuming public is being taken care of by Tanik and Sherry. We can only say thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you.
It's a faith that you will not regret. It's a faith that will be remembered by my good self as a leader of the football family and by everybody who works with our football association. Ghana football is appreciative. Our sport will be developed because this investment is worth a life of a human being. Five cars will also be available for the FA to use in Qatar during the FIFA World Cup. Well, some good news there for the Ghana FA, but some countries have been releasing their final squad for the 2022 World Cup. Today, three powerhouses, Germany, England and Ghana's group opponent, Portugal, release their squad. Let's go through them now, shall we? Well, that is the Cameroonian FA who released their squad and Onana, Andre Onana is in there. Eric Chupomotin, who plays for Bayern Munich, is also in there and likely to lead the attack. Captain Vincent Abubakar, who plies his trade in Saudi Arabia, also makes the cut and quite a number of other players making the cut. Also, uh, 2018 third place finishers, Belgium uh, also, also released their squad and Thibaut Courtois is in there. Mignolet is also in there in defence, uh, quite a number. Carrasco and in midfield, Onana, a player who plays for Everton, is in there. And the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, Manchester City, in from Kevin De Bruyne is there. Torgan Hazard of Borussia Dortmund is also in there. And Axel Witzel is also in there. Uh, and, uh, Rumelo Lukaku is in attack as, long as, as well as Michi Bashwai also in attack so that's uh, for the belgium national team and the team that plays fourth in the 2018 world cup england also have released their squad and jordan pickford of everton is in the nick pope aaron ramsdale as part of the goalkeepers in defense trent alexander arnold is in there conor cody is in there eric dyer harry maguire luke shaw john stones kieran trippier carl walker and ben white make the defenders in midfield Jude Bellingham of Dortmund is in their corner. Gallagher, Chelsea, Jordan Henderson, Liverpool, Mason Mount, Carvin Phillips, Declan Rice, part of the midfielders there. And in attack, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, Harry Kane, James Madison, Marcus Rashford, Bukayo Saka, Raheem Sterling, and Callum Wilson make the attack there. Ghana's opening, Portugal also released their squad. And goalkeepers, Diogo Costa, Rui Patricio, Jose Sa making the goalkeepers and in defense, João Cancelo, Diego Dalo, Pepe, Ruben Diaz, Danilo Pereira, Antun Silva, Nuno Mendes, and Guerrero in the William Ruben Neves, Alhina, Bruno Fernandes, Vitinha, Otavio, Matheus Nunes, Bernardo Silva, João Mario, all making the midfielders. And in attack, Cristiano Ronaldo is in there, João Felix, Rafael Leal, Ricardo Horta. And Andre Silva there, Ghana will face Portugal in the first group game at the 2022 World Cup there. Germany, goalkeeper Manuel Nia is also in there. Mark andre Testegen, Kevin Trapp. In defence, Amel Bella, Kochap is in there. Ginta is in there. Gunta is in there. Kara is in there. Klotz is in there. Rome, Rudiger also in there. Niklas Sule made the cut. And Karim Adeyemi of Borussia Dortmund made the cut. Julian Brandt is also in there. And Serge Nabri also in there. Leon Goretzka, Mario Götze, the player who scored that winning goal for Germany in the 2014 World Cup, makes a return to the German national team since 2017. Kai Havertz, Ike Gundogan, Jonas Hoffmann, Joshua Kimmich, Yusufa Mukoko, the 17-year-old Yusufa Mukoko, gets his first call-up to the German national team. Or the Leroy Sene and Thomas Muller all make the cut. Well, Black Stars coach Otoado will name his final squad on Monday, November 14, 11 a.m. We understand Sporting Lisbon wonder kid Fatal Isahaku is in Ghana's provisional 55-man squad, but he is struggling for playing time in Portugal. Zach Lowy, a keen follower of the Portuguese league, is confident Isahaku will secure a spot in Sporting Lisbon's 11 if he works harder.
been a weird season for sporting. Um, they are, I think, fifth or fourth right now. They've dropped a lot of points. And I think that environment ha- can be sort of damaging for a lot of young players who are trying to break into the first team and get minutes, like uh, like Fatau, like Sotiris Alexandropoulos, who arrived in the summer. And yeah, Fatau, I have to say, I, I think he's only come off the bench a few matches i i know that he's been used both as a wing back and a winger so uh, kind of using that versatility but to be honest with you, the only glimpse of fatau um that i really saw was i think in a three nothing loss to porto where he clumsily gave the ball away um, and it should have been a goal for Porto. I think the only reason the ref didn't give it was to have mercy on Sporting, who were uh, down to 10 men at the point and already losing. But uh, yeah, I haven't been able to get a great gra- grasp on him, but I do think he has potentially a chance of getting some more minutes uh, throughout the season. And yeah, a- as I mentioned, Sporting, it's been a weird season for them. They're coming off a summer... Uh, where they lost their best attacker in Pablo Sarabia. Uh, their two starting midfielders in Joao Paulinha and Mateus Nunes. Um, you know, so, and, and that is something that is very difficult to recover if you're a team. So, look, I, I am a bit concerned. Does Fatou have the uh, technical ability, right, uh, to, to survive in the Portuguese league? I think that is something that a lot of players coming from Africa tend to struggle with. But uh, hopefully, really hoping that he can make it work because sporting, they definitely need some uh, exciting uh, wide threat. And I think that Fatahu, from what I've seen of him, from his speed and his ability to take players on, I think he can offer that. Um, so sporting are definitely missing that presence. I- and still on Guinean players abroad, Alidu Seydou has been recounting his early struggles in France and how he was scouted by his current team, Clement Foot. He has been speaking to Joy Sports, Gary Asmith, on Star Connect, which airs on Joy Prime. So you came to France, did a few justifiers? Yeah, I came to France, I did a few justifiers. And my first justifier was in, in Troy. Troy, yeah. And I went there, my first training that I had, I got injured at my ankle. Oh, so oh, oh, my oh. ankle got break. But the second time I, I did the trials. I played for two weeks trials, mm-hmm. and I got injured again. What? Yeah, I got injured, and the team told me that, like, I'm a player. I'm not strong. I can't. Play you are injury long. prone. Like, yeah. You are injury prone. Um, yeah, so I can't play for long. Always injury, so they won't pick me. So I should leave. I was like, ah. so I was in the in the hotel, like waiting for my ticket to be ready, yeah. so that I'll go back to the academy in Ghana. Yeah. So my agent called me like Wednesday night and, and tell me that um, Clermont saw you playing the tournament, you know? Yeah. So they want to pick you, even if you are injured. They want to pick you and try and see if you'll be good. And when you come back from injury, you won't, like, you won't get injury like how you used to do in Troyes. I was like this. Like, I was crying, you know, I was very happy. Yeah, crying because, and laughing at the same yeah, time. Because I packed my things, everything. I called my mom. I told my mom that. You don't I'm understand what's going on here. I'm coming on Thursday. I'll come and read like Thursday night, you know. Welcome back. Now, the national power, power lifting team is basking in glory after impressing in its first mandatory qualifier for the 2024 Paralympic Games in Paris, France. Uh, the team won 16 medals at the just ended Africa Open Championship in Egypt. We're privileged to have in the studio a key member of the team, Emmanuel Ni Tete Oku. Head coach Prince Nyako Prince uh, will, will join us via Zoom later. But for now, we have Emmanuel in the studio. Emmanuel, good to have you. Good to have you in the studio. And we can see on our table some medal, and you need to take us to what each one of them represents. Obviously, this is silver. So let's start with uh, the one here on my far left. So this is the silver. What, 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 what um, division was this and what does it represent? Okay, so um, like you said, my name is Imano Anita Teoku and I competed in the senior men's 72 bodyweight category. 72 bodyweight category. category. All right. So um, 
in my class we were 11 uh, and then um, this first silver you see here was um, ranked was ranked uh, I was ranked the second place in the overall senior men and then also second place in um, regional mm. which is um, in Africa you see um, it's an open African championship which means okay other countries that are not from africa can also come mm. so if you have a foreign country in your class mm. after the competition they rank all of you mm. and then after that they take off the uh, non-african countries and then rank the african countries too mm. so oh. in the world i was the second and then in africa i was second mm. so in the world you were second yeah. in the 76 uh, 72, KG, 72 um, yeah. division you were second in the world you were second in africa yeah. And we have a gold medal here. This was yeah, all. This gold too is also um, overall left. Overall left. You see, we have every, everyone has three lifts. Mm. So when they finish, they will add all your lifts and mm. then making a total. Lift. And overall, you were first. Yeah, I had the best lift. I did a total lift of five hundred and seventeen. And the whole world, you were first. Yeah. In Africa, you were first. Yeah. Fascinating. Congratulations. But what did the trick for Team Ghana in Egypt? Because sixteen medals is a lot. Um um uh, it's it's a result of good investment you know mm. um mr samsidin um the president of the national paralympic committee who also doubles up as the african paralympic committee president really invested a lot in us he took us overseas for um residential campaign mm. he made sure we were in good shape before mm. the competition so mm. Like I said, um, it's um, a result of good investment. Good investment. Well, Coach Prince Nyako uh, is on Zoom and he has joined us. Coach, I mean, you led the team to Egypt, right? And But the yeah. question is, did you believe Ghana could win this number of medals? Uh, hello, um, good evening. Um, yeah, I, had, I strongly believed in my athlete. And before we left Ghana, um, they, they had every, every, each an athlete had made the maximum minimum qualification standard already. So I had hope in them. And as he said, with good investment, Mr. Samson, he really invested in both the athletes and the coaches. So, I mean, we, we had our, our, our hopes high and I mean, we did it. We made Ghana proud, yeah. I mean, but the question is, how close is Ghana in terms of closing the gap between, you know, the countries that are far advanced in this very field? Um, as it stands now, we are we are up there. As Emmanuel has the overall lift in the world, good. As it stands now, we have only four years. He has been four years in training. And matching these international athletes who have trained for like 15, 20 years, and with four years competing with them, I mean, there's more room for improvement. Ghana is will go far. Mm, interesting. Let me come to you, Emmanuel. I mean, clearly, these number of medals you were able to pick up, very impressive. But were you satisfied? Um, yeah, with uh, what I did, uh, you see, in my class, my minimum, minimum qualification standard is 142. Mm. And uh, I did 176 kg, mm. which is far more than my minimum qualification standard. So mm. I'm cool with it. I did all I could. Mm. But what should be the team's targets in, in, in the next tournament? Well, what do you think the team's targets should be? Because we know the overall team performance, you had bronze. Yeah. That so is the men's team event, mm, yeah. the men's team event, you had bronze. So in terms of targets in the next uh, competition, what do you think should be the target for the team? Um, like I said, we are in good shape, and then we are ready for any other upcoming uh, qualifier that um, will be sent to. You. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward to make more than what I've already done. Mm. Yeah, we we have our next competition in Dubai, and I'm looking forward to make. At least 180 kg. Wow, that's yeah. that's ambitious. <laughs> Super ambitious. But coach, I mean, any message for corporate Ghana in terms of support? Because we understand your team need lots of support to be ready, particularly for that tournament in Dubai. Um, yeah, indeed, we need a lot of support. We need a lot of hands on board. We ask corporate Ghana, corporate bodies to come and support the NPC Ghana and our president, Mr. Samson Dean, to help us go for the remaining qualifiers. I mean, we are calling everybody, anybody, a corporate body, anybody who wants to support Ghana Para Powerlifting. I will not let Ghanaians down. We are here to make Ghana proud as you've started the journey. 
Well, Coach, thank you. thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it and congratulations to you, Imano. Congratulations to you. We definitely wish you the best in Dubai. Thank you. We are very sure that you'll get more, more of these yeah, coming too. More. Well, uh, that's why we do the curtains on tonight's edition of Prime Sports with me, Razak Muzbar. Thank you for being a part of this. And do follow us on all our socials and myjoonline.com for slash sports. You have a lovely evening.